to another episode of the Rockfit Files. I'm Rocky Snyder. This week, I invite Daniel Spencer, who's not only a trainer, but he also belongs to the company Salus, which is all about blue-green algae and a whole bunch of other really healthy supplements. I think you're going to enjoy this conversation because we get away from training and focus more on what you can do to put in your body to fuel it for better performance, better focus, better energy. Hope you enjoy. So we've been in touch for a little while, back and forth through social media. You've been living down closer to the equator, surfing, living the lifestyle down there. Uh, tell me a little bit about what drew you down to those reaches and what's drawn you back to the area around Klamath Falls, Oregon. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot, Rocky. Thanks for having me today. And um, yeah, we've been in touch back and forth. And actually, I'm from the Bay Area. And we had chatted a few times, but we never fully got a chance to connect. So six years ago, I moved to Mexico just because something just didn't feel right as far as my connection to my lifestyle, my philosophy of living. I feel like it shifted and I just didn't feel like it was the right place for me to be in the Bay Area. So I had an opportunity to move to a town in Sayulita called Sayulita. It's in Mexico and it's right on the coast. Um, it's about an hour north of Puerto Varda. And it literally was an opportunity for me just to kind of write a new chapter, you know, like literally nobody knew who I was, nobody knew my history. And I had an opportunity to really just dive in and find my passions, which to me was really important for me in this journey. Um, because I had these skills and tool sets of teaching people and educating people. And I thought I was going down there to teach retreats and doing workshops um, of the things that I love to do and share with people. But in that journey, I got into learning about media, photography, telling stories, um, environmental, you know, humanism. And it just met some amazing, inspiring people along the way that just kept, kept my passion going up and up and up. And it just literally, I was like, I just found out that there's more to life than training is basically what it came down to it. You know, my life had been so much about training and training and training. Now I had an opportunity to kind of step away and step in to see what my training could actually do for my life. Wow. Well, you're in a nice place in your life where you didn't have, uh, sounds like you didn't have a lot of anchors or obligations that you could uh, just lift up your, your belongings or what you had, relocate and, and explore. So obviously, you know, we both share the passion of surfing and Sayulita is just a, a, a really nice destination for the surf community and mm -hmm. i'm sure you you met a lot of expats down there as well as the the mexican nationals as well but what what were some of the things that you found i mean it's nice to to, to know that training isn't everything i mean that's it, it's easy to fall into that hole too where all you do is train and then you forget why is it that i even began this journey so what, what did you find out yeah for me it was just um because all I knew was training, like if that, that was the identity, it was the training side of, side of me. And it's like, when I noticed that when I tried surfing and I noticed the things that I was doing in my training wasn't helping me for surfing, that was the big epiphany. It's like, well, what am I doing? Why am I spending so much time on doing these things if it's not helping me do the things that I really want to do and learn? And surfing has got to be the hardest thing I've ever, I've ever tried to do. There's so many factors about it. You know, it's like, Every day is going to be different. You have to be totally present. You have to learn to read the waves, number one. Once you know how to read the waves, then you have a board. Then you have to, you know, then you have to be able to handle that board while the conditions are constantly moving. And then you have people around you that don't know what they're doing either. I mean, it's, and then and on top of it, if you get caught in the inside, you're getting pounded by waves and you're thinking like, why am I out here? What am I doing? So the mindset thing from surfing was a, was a big takeaway for me. And I, I never put too much pressure on my surfing because I knew that it was just an opportunity to, to learn each time I went out there I just focused on learning something new how could I paddle a little bit more efficiently how could I do something that you know how could I duck dive better how could I be as efficient as possible in my movement because surfing as you know it's all about endurance it's not as it's not some it's not a sprint you know it's about like being as efficient as possible in your body 
And then when you get out of the water, you don't want to feel beat up because you want to do it again the next day. You know, so, so it's about also maintaining yourself in the process. And when I was surfing, I totally <clears throat> just let myself go. All the other training went, went away. And I just let my body just feel what it felt like to surf all the time, surf all the time. What was getting tight in my body? And I didn't really address it at that time. I just started to notice and be observant of it. I was like, hmm, my lower back's getting tight. I can't touch my toes anymore. Like all these things, which helped me understand what, what's going on in a surfer's body. So then when I worked with other surfers, I knew what I needed to address with, when it came to them. Yeah, that was, I was going to say with, with this uh, kind of exploration and using yourself as your own laboratory, what did you find was missing? Like as you kind of continued with this experiment, so to speak, you, you spoke about maybe limited mobility or flexibility in the lower back, uh, but what other, what other elements I mean, within training, but also outside of training, like the mental, the, the nutritional, the, the spiritual, like, did you find that there were some little Swiss cheese and all that? Mm, that's a really good question. I think the more just, um, just being calm in those situations where they're stressful was one of the biggest takeaways, you know, like, you know, literally if you have a nine foot board and you're stuck inside and you see everybody else on a short board going under and duck diving and they're getting away and they're before, you know, the back of the lineup and you're still stuck and you're just like, this is so frustrating. This is so frustrating. I don't know what to do, but I know I just have to keep going and keep going. And then you get tired. I think the big thing was when you get tired, it's important to not lose focus. You know, it's so easy when you get tired, you just want to be like, oh, when is this going to be over? But the ocean's not going to let you, that, let you have it that way. She's going to teach you over and over again. Like she's going to test you. How bad do you want this? How bad do you want this? And I also think a lot of that has to do with my, um, my resiliency had to come with my handstand training because I spent so many times doing handstands, like thousands of repetitions to get that one little bit of success. And when you get that one little bit of success, things click on and there you can build upon that success. So surfing was just like that in the sense of I never gave up because I knew that if I kept at it, I would be able to find those little nuggets of success and build upon them. And then once you feel the success, then you know that you can recreate that again and again. All right. So you spent some time down in Sayulita and exploring this and, and uh, surprises along the way of of social media and and getting word out there, telling stories and whatnot. But eventually you you came back north. Now you're up in Oregon. What what happened? <clears throat> well, in this six years, I really realized that um, I wanted, I've always, you know, we're personal trainers. Why do we do this? We want to help people. We want to be able to give people information to empower their lifestyle so they can do it without us. That's, that's, to me, that's the whole totality of being a trainer is to teach. And in that process, I felt like my teaching was limited in the fact that I could reach only this many, this, this many people. But what was missing is people are missing complete whole food nutrients that empower their mind and body in a way they've never felt before. And so this is part of my exploration was about, you know, all these supplements, foods, different cultures, and, you know, granted, I've had the opportunity to really tap in and just live with these people and live in these cultures and, and live in, you know, spend a weekend in these mountains with these indigenous communities. And we eat nothing but the food that's around them. And you see these people and they're so happy and so joyful. And it's, there's a big thing missing there because they're getting food that's connected to them. They're around their food. And I think there's a big part of that is people are disconnected from what they're eating what their body's doing with how they're moving. And obviously surfing helps you because if you're not thinking about what your body's doing, you're gonna be falling and you're gonna be like laughing and you're gonna be like, I'm a kook right now because I'm not fully present in my body. So the reason why I'm here in, Met in um, Oregon, Southern Oregon is because I found a product which I've been searching for for my whole life that literally it grows in nature. And it contains the same amino acid profile as humans, and it shares the same DNA as humans. So when your body takes this product, you feel it working. And that to me is very important because my lifestyle is very minimal. I'm on the road, I'm traveling, and I don't have time to bring a big bag of supplements and foods and all these other things. If I, there's one product I would ever take, it's, just, it's an algae. 
And this product is a blue green algae. And what makes it unique is so let me just let me just kind of preface the whole thing about algae because algae for people that know it's not just pond scum it's the first source of life so this planet basically was full of carbon dioxide and this algae photosynthesized the carbon dioxide and created oxygen and in that process it it that has contains all the nutrients that our bodies need but what makes this algae so unique in this area is because there was a volcano which is about 40 miles away called Crater Lake. Now, 8,000 years ago, it was called Mount Mazama and it was about 12,000, 14,000 feet high. Now it's only about 8,000 feet high, but imagine all in that, in that eruption of Mount Mazama, it erupted. And so the whole mineral, this whole area where I'm at is full of minerals, deep, deep, deep earth minerals, these called micronutrients that our bodies may not have never felt before. And our bodies have receptors for all these minerals. I'm talking about gold, palladium. I'm talking about vanadium, which is really good for your blood sugar. Like all these micronutrients that our bodies have never felt before. So that's why I'm here is to learn about the products from, I'm living at, the play, at, a, at a house where the guy has been harvesting this product for 25 years. So I've been able to learn and be mentored by somebody who has extreme knowledge of this, of this subject so then I can share it and educate the community. Okay, so when you say we share the same DNA, I think I understand what you're saying. From the prim primordial ooze, we began building DNA. And then as evolution occurred, that initial DNA structure was developed into different species, different branches of life. But we still maintain that core structure within our DNA makeup, in our genes, genetics. So, so the blue green algae mm -hmm. and us that's that's what you mean by we're sharing the dna correct yeah and so this algae actually has rna which is the messengers to connect the dna mo molecules together so what's what's really um it's a it's a great time <clears throat> to talk about this product because you know mushrooms are, are kind of popular now people are like realizing the potential healing potential of mushrooms but algae has the same and talking about the mycelium network of how they you know how the mushrooms can communicate together. Are you familiar with the mushroom network? Yes. Well, so Santa just to, Cruz Mountains, where there's a huge mushroom community right. in, along the Santa Cruz area. Yeah, so the algae has its own network. So literally, it's basically communicating and it's to all these different algae. So if there's a, there's a weak part of it, there's a weak algae, they're either gonna give it the nutrients that it needs to bring it up to be part of the clan, the clan or they're gonna let it go. And then they're, the other, they're gonna keep the energy for the other part of the algae. So when you're ingesting this algae, you're getting the best of the best of the best. And so talking about the source of life, it goes from the algae, then it goes to the fungi, then it goes to lichens, and then it goes to the plants. And so all of our products include that ratio of... Wow. Now, you, you before we began recording, we were talking about the actual harvesting itself. It's uh, Klamath Lake in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And you, normally you were saying you, in fact, my daughter goes uh, to school, she's at a university north of you up along uh, the Washington, Oregonian border, mm -hmm. but it's so rainy in the state. However, you mentioned that where you are, that's not the case. Yeah, that's what I thought too, when we first showed up here and it was beautiful and sunny. This area is a unique ecosystem. It actually has 300 days of sunshine per year because the algae is connected to the light. So literally it's, it's called the, so this species of algae that I'm talking about, it's called Athanazamanon flaz agua, which means the invisible flower of the water. So literally the minerals on the bottom of this lake, when the, when the, when the light is the right amount of light this time, they, you can only harvest it twice a year. And it's usually around, um, it's actually connected to a full moon. So the extra light from the full moon is when the algae goes to the surface and it blooms and it blooms like an oil slick almost. So you can literally see it pulling together and blooming and growing. Algae is the fastest regenerative, you know, you know, uh, source resource we have on this planet. So it can literally regenerate itself so fast. So when you put it in your body, it's regenerating and repairing and communicating and reproducing your cells in a way that you've never felt before. All right, so right now I'm envisioning you out on some type of skiff as if you're with a, with a pole 
in the the New Orleans Bayou or something at a full moon and yeah. harvesting it with some kind of cloak on or something. Obviously, that's not it, but it's it's kind of interesting that well, so many things are affected by the moon, and and there's there's um, hatchings of of mayflies and and desert blooms, and so that's not out of reach. It just you know, for the average listener, they're going to go, oh, man, here we go. I know, There's right? A, a exactly. Bay Area trainer who went to Mexico, found himself, probably ate some peyote while he was down there and then said, <laughs> oh, I've got to go to Klamath Lake, right? Well, I, I'm sure that's not the case. So we, let's put that stereotype aside. How do you harvest? I mean, if it's two times a year, you got to get a, a, a truckload and a half of, oh, yeah. of algae, but it can't be just flourishing all around the lake. It's got to be in certain areas. Is that true? That's true. Yeah, there's a certain part of the lake. There's a place on the lake called um, Bear, Bear Island and then Eagle Ridge. And then this population is known for one of the largest um, bald eagle uh, migrations in the area. And it literally just pulls in a certain part of this lake. And so there's two parts of this lake, Upper Lake, Upper Klamath and Lower Klamath. And Upper Klamath is where I'm at on a place called Modoc Point. And uh, I invite anybody who wants to come out and check it out. But as far as harvesting goes, um, there's a big boat and a big barge. And I have a video I can share with you um, that we can share with all the listeners when we, when we post this. And it'll literally show the harvesting. I was able to go on the harvest barge and literally they lift the algae out of the water. They lift the algae out of the water and then um, all the water drips out. And then they push it from one barge to the other barge they bring the barge back to um, the land and then they store it in cold tanks before then they, they ship it off and dry it. And so what makes this algae unique, it's a live food. It's a live superfood. They dry it at under body temperature for four minutes. So all oh. the enzymes and everything's intact. It's not a, a full on you know, heat, heat process. It's very specific. It's very um, calculated. It's pretty fascinating. And so they'll, they'll do about 15,000, 20,000 gallons of algae in, in a harvest. Wow. And, they, and then they truck that to, uh, to get it dried. Truly truckloads then. So yeah. here's, I've got a couple of questions now. Whenever sure. you take something out of an equation, it affects the overall equation at the end, right? So uh, I imagine because of the regenerating ability, the, the speed with which algae can regenerate, it, how, how does that impact the environment, the local ecosystem? I mean, what feeds on the algae and by taking it away, what, what effect does that have? Sure. That, that'll well, be my first question. Okay. Well, it's all about the minerals. You know, we have to go back to the minerals and go back to the story. The story of the volcano erupting and literally it dusted this whole valley and all the way to Greenland with volcanic minerals, just to give you a preference of how many minerals and how big the explosion was. So the algae feeds off the minerals. And so there's 17 rivers here that lead into the lake. They're called the rivers of light. And so literally all of these riverbeds are covered with minerals. And then you're getting the fresh water from Crater Lake, which is the most pristine water available, flushing over these rivers every year and feeding the lake with fresh water and fresh nutrients over and over and over again. And then you have the photosynthesis of the sun creating chlorophyll, which is and creates the, the, the beta carotenes, which then has the amino acids. So it's the perfect synergy of food that's in this lake. So you cannot out harvest, you cannot out harvest this lake because it regenerates itself so fast. Hmm. So yeah, that's okay. a very good question. That was our first question is if we're harvesting all the time, are we doing anything damaging to the ecosystem? And the answer is no. Actually, the ecosystem is so strong here that everything's about 30% bigger. Like the cows are 30% bigger, the, um, the birds are 30% bigger, and it's just a very, very special place in the, in the planet. And this has been going on for like 20, 25 years, you say, or at least with the fellow that uh, you're with right now. Mm -hmm. and, and we've heard about the benefits of blue-green algae, at least I, I remember back in the mid nineties or so. So now we're talking 25, 30 years or so. I am, why? In my experience, it, it hadn't taken on a huge role. Maybe it was trending and then it, it fell out of favor, but it's always been there. What's, what's the deal with that? I mean, why are people, do you think there's a hesitancy about blue-green algae? Or is it 
Is it in the products that we so commonly use now that we, we just don't even know about it? Well, I think it's a lot to do with people have been told that if an algae is in a pool, it's toxic, it's bad for you. You know, so there's a big mis, uh, misconnotation about algae and it has a PR problem, right? Because yeah. most algae is growing in things that are almost dead or things that are, nobody wants, it's not appetizing. So algae in itself is not appetizing. So there's a chance here to really re-educate people and tell a beautiful story of algae. Um, and so, yes, so the, the, basically the question is, there's been also some bad, bad publicity about it because people say, oh, you know, if dogs drink it, they'll get sick and all this other stuff. It's all BS because there's, well, yes, there's certain, there's, there's over like, you know, 10,000 different species of algae, but this one species of algae is safe for humans because we've done the testing. We test it three times before we even go out and harvest it. And then once we harvest it, then we test it again. We dry it, we test it again. So we make sure that it's, it's perfectly safe for human consumption. And there's been some um, rumors that people have taken it and they've, they've been overdosed, but with it, they've had bad health problems, but that's not the case. It's all false information. And so now it's an opportunity to kind of share and re-educate people that this algae is safe for humans and there's no reason why you should not be taking it. You speak of testing, of course, you're, you're undergoing testing with the FDA. And unless you're a mega virus in the world, you're probably not going to get the rapid results of being approved within a matter of weeks or months. So this takes years. So how long have you been seeking approval with the FDA? And, and what does that look like? Well, the FDA is a, is a funny thing. You know, it's um, we're still working on, on the FDA, um, but and we're also there's so many tests that need to be done, like, for instance, there's properties of this algae that actually have antiviral compounds. So think about that as a potential, like for this day and age, antiviral yeah. compounds in this algae. And they just need to be, we just need to get the funding to get lucidate them so then we can concentrate them. So then we can have that as an opportunity for people to, to, to heal their bodies. It's great for antibacterial, um, but the FDA, they don't, they don't, um, they don't certify a lot of natural natural products because it is grown in nature. And there always, there's always potential, um, you know, situations around that. And so what you have is not, uh, I'm sure some of the listening audience is going, I am not going to get a spoonful of, of slimy pond scum and put it in my, my drink or just even just down it with, without anything, but that that's not the case. Yours, is at least what I've, I've tried is a powdered substance that has been dried and, and somehow, I won't say, I won't use the word processed, but it has been uh, utilized or, or manipulated in a way where it comes in this powder form. Uh, and that still remains uh, classified as live food. How does that work? Well, it goes back to the enzymes, you know, and enzymes are so important. I think a lot of people are missing out on enzymes, you know, like depending on certain foods, you know, if you're eating at a restaurant, you're eating cooked food, you don't have the enzymes. And we don't have the enzymes, enzymes are basically, they, they get our bodies to function. And if you don't have the enzymes, then you're not making these chemical connections in your body, you're not breaking down, you're not absorbing the nutrients. So it has to do with the enzymes and that's what makes it a live superfood. The enzymes make the food absorbable and that's what makes our product absorbable as well. So you different than other algaes. It's 97% bioavailable. So literally it's a different species than um, some of the other blue green algaes because they have a plant cell wall, which is a cellulose cell wall. So you only be able to absorb 50% of it because you have to digest a cell wall to get the nutrients out of it. Our cell wall is unique because it has a fatty acid cell wall, meaning that this algae has to hibernate during the cold of the winter. And so it, it creates a protective mechanism around it and also protected from the sun. So that way it keeps the nutrients intact, but then makes them so bioavailable in your body. It crosses the blood brain barrier in your body so you can absorb the nutrients. And I don't know if you felt this, but have you felt it working? Have you felt the difference between before you take it and then after you take it? Yeah, you know, I'm going to say, I'm going to hold off on my, um, on my decision on that because I really like to use the scientific method and I don't have a control group or myself as control. I definitely, um, using the tincture 
and the powder, there is something, there is something. And, but I, I couldn't tell you, I would need to do it um, in, a, in a different approach for me to really give you that answer. I mean, do I feel more alert, more clean? Yes. Could that be because of the product? Yes. Could it be because my intention of taking the product? Yes. I mean, so, so I, you know what I mean? I, regardless, uh, the outcome is positive. So, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, it's quite nice that, yeah, I'm actually feeling quite good. Good. So, well, I think it also comes down to the conversation of um, asking you just, I just ask yourself, how do you feel? And a lot of times today we ask people how they feel like, oh, I feel great. I feel good. Well, how well do you sleep? Not very good. I, I was tossing and turning all night. I had to get up and go to the bathroom all night. You know, like how many, are you taking a nap? No. How many cups of coffee are you having? Oh, just four. You know, like, are you really doing great? And so I think people have disconnected from who, how they really feel. And so I'm not asking you for a scientific, like you know, evaluation. I'm just asking you, do you notice that just check into yourself before you take the product, after you take the product, if you notice anything, maybe you feel, like you said, increase your mood, or maybe if you feel like, oh, I want to go surfing now or whatever, or if you're surfing, you'd be like, I'm not tired. Oh, okay. So these are subtle things that I think people just need to reconnect and be like, okay, how do I feel before I start doing this? How do I feel after this? It's the same thing as movement. It's the same thing as going to the gym. How do you before, feel before going to the gym? How do you feel after going to the gym? Most people feel better. That's why they continue to do it. Yes. So I think there's a lot of like, there's a lot of uh, questions you have to ask yourself. Like, how are you feeling? How do you feel? And so what are the benefits? Like what, what do you list as potential benefits from having included this blue green algae from Klamath Lake into your ongoing diet as a part of your lifestyle? What can a person expect? Well, so basically we're going to talk about micronutrients. You know, I think the everybody's so focused on mac proteins, carbs, fats. Am I hitting my macros? Well, how many people are focused on their micros? How many people are focusing on their their B vitamins, how many people are focusing on their amino acids? You know, this algae has the complete amino acid structure. So it has 20 full complete essential and non-essential amino acids. So it's complete protein. So just because you're eating another food doesn't mean you're able to absorb all those amino acids at the same rate of it. So this is a complete food. So what you're gonna feel is energy for me. For me, it's focus, you know, my ability to just focus on a task. Like for instance, I'm reading this book, Algae to the Rescue. And it's literally, it's a chemistry professor wrote this on algae. So for me to be able to sit there and focus and digest it and understand it. So then I can have these conversations and educate people about it. Algae, that's, that's one of the biggest things is my ability to focus longer. The attention span has increased. And as I feel like people's attention spans are decreasing, that's an opportunity for people to start taking the products and then their attention spans increases so then we can be more present. We can be more focused on what we're doing. Um, another thing is it just makes you want to move. You know, I can tell, I can talk specifics of why I feel that way. But for me, people start taking it and they're like, now they want to go do something, right? They want to go outside and go, maybe they want to go do that project that they've been thinking about doing before. Like, oh, now it's springtime. Now it's time to go plant some, some vegetables. So the, the algae gives you energy, it gives you focus, and it also, it just makes you calm, you know? It also, it kind of gives you that spark, but then when it's time to relax and rest, when it's time to go to bed, it also gets your body just to go, and just calm mm -hmm. down, because again, carbon dioxide, the algae absorbed the carbon dioxide in, our, in, in the atmosphere, emitted oxygen, it's doing the same thing in our bodies. I have a great story about that. I was at a retreat. There was a breath holding retreat with Erwan the core. This was in Mexico. Um, he happened to be living there on the island on, in this place called Yalapa. And he invited me to go out there and film, film him. So now I have a skill set that I didn't have before moving to Mexico. And now I am with Erwan the core and we're doing a breath holding training. And he asked me to film him and film the, you know, do some interviews with the, with the, um, the participants. And so I, I filmed them for the first three days. And then he's like, why don't you start joining us? So I was like, okay. So I started joining them and I wasn't doing the practice with them, but 
I just started joining them. Before you know it, I did like two minute breath holds. And granted, I've done some break with some breath hold training because I wanted surfing. I wanted to get farther. I wanted to do free diving. And then the last day, everybody's okay, we're going to push ourselves. And I was like, all right. So I did it and I got to like four minutes and 45 seconds. I was like, holy cow, that's really good. But something told me I could do a little longer. And so somebody else did it and they got to five minutes. And I was like, well, I think I can do five minutes. So then I was like, I want to go one more time. And so he's like, okay. So then everybody was set up and then they went one more time. And literally, Rocky, I completely let go of, of everything. I let go of control. I was just floating on top of the water with no fear, no fear of anything, no fear of suffocating, no fear of I needed to breathe and just fully let go. I got to six minutes. Wow. And I got to six minutes and everybody's looking at me like, what, what's your diet like? What are you doing this? What's your training? Da, da, da. And all these, all these questions. And it's like, I was just completely relaxed. And I feel it has a lot to do with the algae because think about it, the algae is absorbing the carbon dioxide and giving more oxygen to my body. My cells are more efficient. They're able to make that energy exchange in my, at a cellular level, which then floods my whole body. So, so at that time you were down in Mexico, but you had already been taking blue green algae. Yeah. Yeah. I had taken it for about six months, seven months. How did you come upon it yourself? I don't think we talked about that. Well, so, you know, part of my exploration of like, you know, just testing out and, you know, I've always searched for what is the proper way? What's our, what's our potential? What's our human potential? So I studied out it from movement first, you know, I went from the, from the body. And so I, I, I read this book called Proper Body Exercise um, by Edith Hoyce, amazing book, I highly recommend it. And it taught me a lot about teach, training the body from a holistic and like an integrated point of view no isolated just completely um, integrated and in that process so i've also tried many diets too i tried raw vegan diet and my friend happened to tell me about this blue green algae and granted at the time it was an ice cube trays and basically they would take the frozen water and they'd freeze it and you'd ingest it and it tasted terrible mm. it tasted like you could imagine and it was also very expensive and so i was like wow i like this stuff but it's just it's too expensive it doesn't fit in my lifestyle at this time so when we were in Mexico, my business partner decided that we we're going to make a product and we were going to share this product to as many people as possible. The blue green algae popped in my mind. I said, this is the product that I want to share with people because this is a product that has the most healing potential. Got it. And, wow. And so you made it a reality. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. And how long, what, uh, what's the name of your company, by the way, Daniel? So, so the name of the company is called Saluz which is S-A-L-U-Z. And in Mexico, in, in Mexico, salud is health and luz is light. So we are the light of health. Mm -hmm. And in the light of health, we are going to be sharing uh, healthy products, but also the lifestyle that goes along with it too. Because it's not take the product, feel better. It's about take the product, now what? Now let's integrate it into our bodies. Now let's incorporate the mindfulness. Now let's incorporate the breathing. You know, it's a holistic approach. It's not just one product, you take it, and then, you know, we'll see you later. No, it's about impacting and, and empowering people. All right. So more on a personal note for toward you, is that you left the Bay Area because you were so training-centric. And you went to Mexico. Mm -hmm. And not that you were surf-centric, but that was a very large part of you and uh, a rediscovering. And now you're up in Oregon. And do, do you feel yourself being blue-green algae centric or do you have other pursuits? I mean, are you, are you just, and, and you don't have to answer, but I'm just curious. You're, it seems like from one place to the other, do you, are you expanding with your, your, your visions, your dreams, your pursuits, that type of thing? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I dreamed about being up here in Oregon next. So, Last year, we were here in Oregon. We showed up. We did the harvest. We went back to Mexico. We've continued to work on the company. We launched the product in, in Mexico and started to get out there to people and started to get the testimonials and kind of test, test the whole approach to it. How are we going to get this to as many people as possible? And so then I moved back here in November. And now that you know I survived the winter time, <laughs> just like the algae, I kind of think like, what did the algae do? It had to it had to survive. It had to survive the extreme heats and the extreme colds over 3.5 billion years. 
So I feel like the algae, I'm starting to adapt and evolve so then I can thrive. And so now that the winter's over, now I'm ready to go out there and tell as many people as possible. So um, my next step is to pack up my car with our products and visit as many people as possible. I wanna go down to um, you know running clinics or running events or any sort of event and get people to try it because it's enough to talk about it, but people need to try it. And we found that when people, and I can talk about it and I can show people what the different colors of the algae looks like and how it benefits them, they get, and they, and they start to connect to it. They start to understand it like, oh, wow, this is, this is amazing. I, I, I like this. And the color is unique. It's not just a blue. It's not just a green. It's actually called blue green algae, but there's a hint of orange and that's the beta carotenes. So then so literally you're getting the beginning of a vitamin A, vitamin A, and it's coming from the algae, which is coming from the sun. And you're getting the chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is, I think, a product that many people um, are interested in now. But what we've learned is it's not absorbable. There's two different types of chlorophyll. So there's chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. Well, ours has, a, ours has the highest amount of chlorophyll A. A lot of these products you buy, like chlorophyll water, is chlorophyll B. You're not able to absorb it. I was one of those people. I was buying the chlorophyll. I thought it was what I needed. But once I started taking this product, the chlorophyll is flushing through my body. It's, it's good for the lymphatic system. It's good for oxygenating the blood. It's good for increasing the absorption of my, uh, the food that I eat. You know, I think we need to think about, it's not just what we're eating, it's how well we're absorbing it, how well we're digesting it, which comes to information as well, right? We're getting so much information, but if we're not fully digesting information, then what good is it? And Certainly. I think food has a lot to do with that. And so what, what is the recommended dosage? Like it comes with a small spoon mm -hmm. and you put it into just water. Can it be any beverage? How, how can you, can you, I, I imagine you can't cook with it because you don't want it heating up because it's live, but Correct. What, what, what can you do with it? Well, you can do a lot with it. So um, currently I started by taking the powder. Um, so basically you want a gram. And so, yeah, we gave people a spoon so that way they knew what a gram is. Because people say, oh, what's a gram? Like, I don't know, is it a teaspoon? Is it a tablespoon? No, no, here's a gram spoon. You fill it up. You don't want to fill it up over too, too much. You want to just do it like, just like, just like a little bit, right? Just like a little. Um, that's the equivalent of one pound's fruits and vegetables in that serving. Mm. So literally you take that, you put it in your water, you drink that, you're getting the nutrition of one pound's fruits and vegetables. Not to mention you're getting 70 minerals. You're getting 20 amino acids. You're getting essential fatty acids to lie for your brain. You're getting the live enzymes. You know, we can go on and on about it. It's just literally, it's, for me, it's, um, it's just so comforting to know that every time I ingest the algae, I'm giving my body what it needs. I give my body the nourishment that it needs. So then whatever happens in that day, I know that I took care of my body and did the best that I could for my body that day. Mm. Um, and I can put it in my smoothies. Yes. So going back to how I like to take it, you can definitely put it in your smoothies. We're very big on smoothies in Mexico. Um, it's kind of funny being back in the States. A lot of people don't do a lot of smoothies here, you know, mm. where I'm, where I'm at li currently li living. But um, yes, put it in water, put it in your favorite fruit juice. Today I juiced apple, celery, um, carrot, little ginger. And then I, you know, just put the blue green algae in there. I have a shaker bottle. You just shake it around, put it in your cup. And then you just, and you can just drink it throughout the day. There we go. We need yeah. to get you connected with Orange Julius or Jamba Juice or things <laughs> like that. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Any other products you're developing right now that you can mention? Absolutely. So uh, to lose, we have a full brand um, package. We've not only just done the algae, the algae was the first product, but we also have um, pine pollen. And, you know, it's, it's springtime and a lot of people, it's almost time for the pollen to, uh, you know, to harvest. And so people see all the pollen in the car and they think it's a nuisance. Well, actually, if you think about it, it's the multivitamin of the forest floor. So the pollen pollinates the whole area and all the little bugs and all the creatures, all, you know, all the birds, they ingest that pollen and that's their nutrients. That's their multivitamin and that fuels them. So we have a product with pine pollen in it. And it's literally, it's a, it's a phytoandrogen. So it's a precursor for testosterone. 
So for men, it literally gives you that boost. It gives you that spark. It gives you that like oomph that a lot of people are lacking and missing. How the heck do you harvest pine pollen? Is it, you know, I'm just seeing somebody up on the branches with a little broom and putting in the dust yeah. and then dumping it in, but there's, there's gotta be a much more efficient way of doing that. It's, it's, you know, it's literally not that much different than what you just, what you just portrayed, but <laughs> um, no, you just take a bag and then you, you want to get the, the pine pollen before it harvests. Obviously if it's in the air, then it's too late. So there's something out of a pine. So they call it little catkins. And the pollen grabs around the catkins and you just take the bag and wrap it around the catkins and you just shake the catkins and then you're left with the pollen and you just decipher out the little um the catkins and you're left with the pollen and then there you go wow and with with the pollen so pollen goes this pine pollen goes back to korea and they used to use it for um baking powder so they'd cook with it interesting yeah and they'd only use it around the springtime because that's when it harvested so now that it's springtime, we should all be having pine pollen in our bodies. Yeah, well, I know there's quite a few people around here that are not um, uh, that are affected in, in a not too good way when it comes to pollen or, or grass. The allergies around here are crazy. So I could imagine, you know, one of the one of the things for allergies is, uh, you know, put a put a little thing of water or better yet, get some honey made from bees in that area, because what are they doing? They're taking the pollen. They're turning it into honey. You ingest the honey and you build up an immunity to those things that you're allergic to. Yes, right? exactly. Exactly. So the more pollen, so you start slowly, just like everything, you don't want to overdo it if your body's very sensitive and creates that um, hyperallergenic response. So you just start slowly and ingesting the pollen. Okay. I'm okay. I didn't, I didn't have any reactions. Okay. I'll try a little more. And eventually you get up and it's literally, it's a protective mechanism for your body from these allergens, from these, these pollens. You know, and honey is amazing. Um, I, I was like curious about why do why do people not like honey? You know, literally, bees they have a special spot. Are you familiar with where the honey comes from? No, please, please go ahead. So the bees have a special spot in their it's not in their stomach. It's just, it's just a compartment in the bees where literally they go around the pollen. They carry as much pollen as they can from the flower, about two thirds their body weight, and they go back to the to the hive. And there's about six bees sitting around. And they pass, they ingest the pollen into that part of their um, their body, creates enzymes to break down the pollen. They bring the the um, the mixture back up. The other bees do the same thing, and they share it before it goes into the honeycomb. So you're getting enzymes from six different bees, and then it's going into the honeycomb, and that's when you're getting your honey. So that's super important to get live honey because that's where there's a lot of nutrient dense foods in there. There's minerals. Wow, that's fabulous. Now, I just out of curiosity, both of us being trainers, how has training evolved today for you? Like, what is it that you're, you've come, I won't say full circle, but you've definitely gone on a journey where it is not the end all be all, which I think hopefully more trainers are, are coming to terms with that this is just a catalyst for us to enjoy life in hopefully a pain free, energetic way. So how is training for you today? Yeah, it's a really good question. You know, I literally had to, um, like I said, stop training and just figure out like, what do I want to do? Like I, I went to Mexico and I was the handstand guy, right? So here I am doing handstands everywhere and doing these things. But for me, it's an opportunity to connect to my body and just challenge myself in these positions. It's med for me, it's like meditation, nice. which it got to that point. But I started to get to the point where I just stopped doing handstands. I just wasn't interested in doing that anymore. So then I started pursuing things that, allowed me to surf better or allowed me to run better. I just wanted to move better. So my training now is about how I can move better, but how I can move better longer. So there's a lot of longevity perspective approach to it. So I'm constantly trying to give, you know, it's really important for me to have energy because if I do a training where I'm working on, you know, I'm doing, I'm maxing out and I'm doing a lot of heavy, heavy sets and trying to build bulk. I'm depleting a lot of energy that I can't use towards my company and towards my passion, which is to get this as many people as possible. So my training now is all about energy. How can I build my energy through the movements? It's not about how I can just get bigger muscles. And I want to be as efficient as possible. I want to get my body to be as efficient as possible. Beautiful. So if, if the listening audience wants to learn more about the pine pollen or blue green algae or any of the products that you have um, with Salus, 
What's yeah. what's the best way to go about it? Can they find it in their store? Should they contact you directly? What should they do? Yeah, the best way to go about it is to check us out at salus.io. And then you'll go ahead and go to the website and you can check it out. And then we have a code there for you, Rocky, at Rocky20 for all your listeners. And they Excellent. can get a discount on their first product. And then they can really? try it out for themselves. And we'd love to, we'd love to get your, your feedback and conversations, you know. One of the big things about Toulouse is we want to turn social media into healing stories. So we want people to share their healing stories and share their journey with us. You know, how did they feel before I started taking it? How they feel afterwards? The improvements they're having in their life, you know, whether it just be sleeping, a relationship, anything, just how it's benefiting them. That to us is what excites us. And we can, we want to tell those stories. And do you have an Instagram handle for this? We do have an Instagram. Yeah. Toulouse.io is our Instagram. Okay. Well, I'll make sure that all that, including the discount coupon, is in the descriptions for this podcast. Um, Daniel, this has been great. I really appreciate that. And I, and it's intriguing, too, just the, the way things are. I love how things are made. In fact, I've got books on my bookshelf at home, and the titles are How Things Are Made. And mm -hmm. uh, I love that show. Of... Remember that show? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that show is great. I totally dig it. So yeah. they should do an episode on blue green algae and pine pollen for that matter. I'd love to watch that too. But Absolutely. you be sure to send me that video of the harvesting so I can put the link in the description as well. Uh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So you can also find it on our website. We know we've done a little, we have the video there that talks more about the products. And before we, um, we head off, I also want to say we have, we have mushroom products too, you know, and these mushrooms are amazing at what they can do. So we have over um, eight different species of mushrooms that we're also offering as well as the community. Um, one of them is called cordyceps and there's two different types of cordyceps. Well, there's multiple types of cordyceps, but ours is called cordyceps sinensis. And what it does is it literally grows out of a caterpillar larvae in Tibet. And the guy that harvests and grows our, our mushrooms, he went to Tibet 25 years ago. He got the species, he pulled it, he came back to the United States and so he's been cultivating cordyceps ever since. Well, that's very interesting. So for athletes, cordyceps is a product, is a mushroom you want to take because it increases your ATP storage in your lungs. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So we have a product called Vital Source, which is the one that we gave you, which has the pine pollen for the vitality. It has the cordyceps to increase your ATP storage. And then it has ashwagandha to help you know, repair your hormones and give you a little bit more energy and help you recover faster. So it's well, kind of like the, the product that I wish I could find when I first started this journey. Wow. Well, I definitely felt more focused after taking it. And Great. very interesting. Yeah. And well, these are the building blocks, right? The essence of, of where we came from in some ways. So uh, there's, there's some logic behind it for sure. And, and I'm sure the science is there too, and just keeps on getting better. So uh, Daniel, this has been great. I really appreciate your time, your expertise, your insight. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to continuing with, with uh, this exploration of the blue-green algae. Uh, so thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It was great sharing this with your audience. And yeah, I'm here. Like, Please um, reach out to anybody that has any questions about the products or anything we talked about. I'd love to go further in detail about it. Also, let you guys know I'm going to be hitting the road. So um, follow the Instagram. I'll let people know. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to get you to just try a sample and just connect. You know, now it's a time to really connect and share this to as many people as possible, which is our vision. Fantastic. And that's a wrap for the Rockfit Files this week. Thank you, Daniel Spencer, for coming on with Salus. Remember, go to his website, salus.io. Any of the products there, when you check out, put in that little discount, Rocky 20 and you'll get a little bit off off the sale price itself. I think you're going to enjoy it and, and benefit from it just like I have. Until next time, be sure to subscribe, follow us on Instagram, and we'll see you next week.